Jesus fade be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, in your children, in your children. Please fade be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, your children, in your children. Children, this favor be upon you in a thousand generations. You know, it's so important to recognize what the Lord is doing amongst his people. There is a point in the scriptures in the book of First Samuel where David was captured. He had been taken as a prisoner, if you may, and he started to become afraid for his life when he came to the realization that he was afraid and he was uh, being afraid and the spirit of fear was overtaking him. We've got to do exactly what it is that David did. He got on his knees and he began to cry out to the Lord. David literally says, you know what? I am going to separate myself from this situation and I'm going to lean and depend on the one true God. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 56, he's, he writes this text from that experience. He says, be merciful to me, O God, for men would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight almost high. There are many who fight almost high. And they fight against me. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. Then he goes on and he begins to ask a very profound question. What can flesh do to me? And he continues, all day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. I can see some of you now that are in the corporate environment and you find individuals that will uh, misrepresent the statements that you're making and you find yourself reclining to a position where you're beginning to wonder, is God still with me? And you begin to worry, you begin to doubt, and you begin to fear. My objective tonight is to encourage you to walk and stay steadfast in the word of God. And do not worry or fear or allow any given situation to cause you to, to be in fear. At any given time, we've all faced the temptation of worrying about something. Worry comes from focusing on the wrong things at the right time. Focusing on the wrong things, the misrepresentation of our focus will cause us to walk in worry. Anxiety comes when we get wrapped up into material possession instead of having our faith in God and in the God who supplies everything that we need. We must understand that it's important that God is the supplier of all our needs. Paul told the Philippian church, when I left Macedonia, you are the only ones that sent me an offering. He goes on to say, when I arrived in Thessalonica, you provided for my needs. Yes, all these things are true, but I want you to know that just as I was not worried about my needs, you too must embrace the fact that your needs have already been satisfied. 
he goes on and he writes, My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches. All of the riches of the world belong to God. We must not allow momentary circumstances to affect how we feel. We should not allow temporary situations to cause us to gravitate towards worrying, doubt, and unbelief. Worry is fear-based. When we are absolutely sure and confident about the promises of God, we will find rest in his word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. He says, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. When we enter into the rest of God, we will no longer rely on our works, if you may. We are not concerned about uh, achieving. We are not concerned about man-pleasing. We are place our concerns only on pleasing our Savior. We do not worry or fret about our basic necessities. Why? Because God says he will supply all of our needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. God will take care of all of our needs. If you would turn your Bibles with me, I want to walk through a few passages of Scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Jesus is teaching here. He says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? This is a very strong and interesting question. Are you not more valuable than they are? So Jesus here is establishing a value proposition for you and I. We are considered to be more valuable than the birds of the, the air, the fishes of the sea. Now, in that value proposition, Jesus also establishes the fact that his father, our father, will take care of all, all of our needs. So there is nothing that we should worry about. He goes on and he says, which of you by worrying can add one cubic to your statue? I don't know about you. Worrying has not caused me to add a cubic to my statue, but sitting at the dining room table for an extended period of time does. But it doesn't apply here. We're dealing with worrying. That was just my comic relief for just a moment there. But the impression of the word of God that Jesus Christ is conveying to his disciples and those of us that are willing to hear his word is that worrying will not bring you to a place of solution. Verse 28 says, so why do you worry about clothing? Why do you worry about those little things? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon in his splendor, his chariots, his fine clothing cannot compare to what Jesus is showing us here today. It's so awesome that we see that the word of God has all the answers to our needs. Verse 30 says, Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. We're going to see that statement come back up a little bit later on. O oh, you of little faith. Because it's being attributed here in this particular text to worrying. And Jesus is, in, is instructing his disciples and those that are listening on the Sermon on the Mount. He says, do not concern yourself with how you're going to live from day to day. 
Do not concern yourself of how you're going to carry yourself uh, from one place to the next. Do not be concerned about even the pain that's reeking through your body now. But consider the grace of God that has been bestowed on you. Consider the fact that you have given your heart over to your father and he promised that he will take care of you. That is the kind of God that we serve, saints and friends that he will take care of all of our needs and we should not allow ourselves to waller in the mediocrity that is worrying, fear, doubt, or unbelief. His word is strong. His word is there. He says that his word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Strong enough, powerful enough to divide, to even cut to the very marrow and it will divide asunder. Verse 31 says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? How many times do we see, even in our city here and now, that the homeless, you wonder how they eat. But somehow somebody always comes by and takes good, I, I don't want to say good care, but offer them something. We really should not have a homeless situation in a country that has so much to offer. I will stay on my point here today that God does not want us to worry. Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Your father in heaven knows that you have a need. And before you can even have that need, before the need would have even arise, he has given a way of escape. He has already provided the answer for your very need. It's so interesting that we see how God lays this out through his son, Jesus Christ, that you and I will have a, a point of reference, if you may, a point of reference in the word of God. Everything must point back to the word of God. No matter where it is that we will go, we must always go back to the word of God to find the answers to our needs. The Bible says in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Whatever these things, all these things, whatever it is that you have need of, whatever it is that you're worrying about, God says he has already made it a provision in his word. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient every day that may come up. There may be some challenges that you may face, but do not be concerned about tomorrow. As I speak to you here and now, we have got to embrace this as a family that we, we will not be worried about one set of circumstances over another. We should lay them all on the altar. We should lay them all before the Lord and trust and believe in God to the depth of our faith. It should not be asked of us, O ye of little faith. Psalms 55 verse 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Our righteousness as we established in the last session does not come from our own. It's the righteousness of God that we possess. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we have been engrafted into his bosom and he has covered us with this righteousness. And he says he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. So we are hidden under the umbrella, under the bosom, under the arms of the Holy Spirit. And he is there to protect us. He is there to guide us. He is there to provide our sustenance and everything that we need. There's a story in the book of St. Matthew. Jesus has entered into the ship and his disciples following along closely as good sons will follow their father's footstep. They had gone onto the water and they had been on the water for some time when a storm came up. 
This was no ordinary storm. The Bible calls it a tempest. This was a violent and windy storm. The winds were clashing up against the sails. The waves were clashing against the side of the boat. The ship began to be covered by the waves. I can only imagine what this was like. I am not a big fan of sailing, but I've been told that when the winds and the waves come and you get in the far regions of the ocean, sometimes the waves can come a hundred feet high and even cover some of the boats. But yet and still, Jesus was on the water and his disciples were there and they were experiencing this type of tempest. And as the story goes, they began to worry. They began to doubt. But what was Jesus doing? This was like some of the challenges that we are faced with today. The waves of life have come up against us. The tempests have come up against us. Some of us are experiencing challenges in our health. Some of us are experiencing challenges in our, our faith walk. But yet and still, Jesus is there and he is resting in the hinder part of the boat. And as the story goes, the waves of life was seeming to come aboard, just like the waves were coming aboard on the ship. And as long as they were just hitting against the side of the boat, the disciples could deal with it. They were only startled. As long as the bills are not overwhelming us, we can deal with it. But let them get to a point of crescendo. Let them get to that place where we begin to wonder whether or not we're going to have sufficient to take care of them. We begin to worry. We begin to lose sleep at night. But the story shifts and the disciples began to worry even the more. And as I mentioned before, Jesus was asleep. Jesus was resting. Jesus was not concerned about the situation. He knew that his father had everything under control. He knew that his father is the giver of life. And he, in that he is the giver of life, he sure can protect life. The disciples decided that enough was enough. These winds are getting bigger than us. We must wake Jesus up. While Jesus might be sleeping in that situation, he is not sleeping now. He has risen from the dead and he has taken up his position at the right hand of the Father. And he has left for us a comforter that will guide us, that will protect us, and will cause us not to live in fear, doubt, and worry. I want to pause here and give the disciples some credit. They knew where to go to get some help. They knew who to go to to get some help. This is that Jesus that I offer you today. The only one that can relieve you of the stress of fear, the stress of worry, and the stress of unbelief. And when you accept him as the total package in your life, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he will come in and remove that doubt. They said, Lord... Save us. Lord, save us. If you don't save us, we are going to die. I want you to remember that Jesus is on board. Those of you that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to remember that when you're confronted with a situation, that Jesus is on board. He has promised that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Jesus wakes up and asks the obvious question. He says, why are you so full of fear? And why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. I told you that that statement was going to come back up again. Jesus had just taught them earlier about how the birds would be taken care of. And in that same scenario, he asks the question, Oh, you of little faith, how dare you wake me up from my rest for this little problem? Where is the word that I've been teaching you? I taught you that you should not worry about your life. 
what you should eat or what you should drink. Don't worry about your body of what you will wear from day to day. Look at the birds. They do not sow. They do not reap. They do not even have barns. But your heavenly father still takes care of them every day. He makes sure that their he makes sure that their needs are satisfied. Don't you know that you are more valuable than they are? What are you worrying about? Oh, you of little faith. Jesus gets up and he rebukes the wind. Isn't that like Jesus? He comes in and he takes control over what has been given to him in authority. And he has gone back to be with the Father and he has given us the authority in the earth domain. Jesus gets up and he rebukes the wind and the seas. The Bible says there was great calm. Not ordinary calm, but great calm. This example is what Jesus is laying out for you and me today. He is speaking to us and telling us to stop worrying about our circumstances. Rest in him, knowing that God has already made a way of escape. He says, don't marvel in whom you should trust. Do not marvel. Do not be concerned about anything. But understand how important it is that God has made a way of escape for you. The spirit of fear, worry, and doubt will rob you of your joy. The spirit of fear, doubt, and worry will rob you of your peace. It will rob you of your natural sleep even. I want you to understand something here that God has laid out the word of God as an example for us. And if you embrace the truth of the word, you will know assuredly that you're more valuable than the birds. Your value to the kingdom of God, money cannot buy. We should not relegate our circumstances to our bank account. We should relegate our circumstances to having faith in God and trusting in God and knowing that God will come true Every time, my friends, my time is gone away from me. I want you to hear the, the truth and the word that we're delivering to your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, every person watching or listening today, cause this word to move them to a place of not worrying any longer. Cause your spirit to dwell in their hearts. We pray that any doubt, any area of doubt that is in their lives will be eradicated by the word of God because it is you who have given us the power. It is you who have given us the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. Dear Heavenly Father, your Holy Spirit will guide us. It will bring us to a place of understanding your word. This spirit will make us strong in you, Father. We are so grateful to all of you that are tuning in to these broadcasts. We're thankful to God for you. As always, we encourage you to remember your tithes, your offerings, and your first fruit as part of this work. Live in Word Church, we're located at 4101 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, Southwest Washington, D.C. Until the next time we see you, may God richly bless you again. In Jesus' name. Make his face shine.